In Boston, 1775, just one year before the American Revolution, outraged American colonials were openly opposing unjust tax laws, and the presence of British soldiers in the Navy brought about vigorous attempts to overthrow British rule. The cry was, no taxation without representation, in angry defiance to a parliament far away across the sea in Britain, defiance which was to flare into violence and revolution. Artemis Ward recently had been made general of the new colonial army, which had been secretly formed to defend American rights. It was on this day in June that he learned the British had decided on a military occupation of all the towns around Boston. This was bad, as Cambridge would be occupied, which was the headquarters of the new American Provincial Congress. A committee of safety for the colony met and quickly decided that it appears of importance to the safety of this colony that possession of the hill called Bunker's Hill in Charleston be securely kept and defended. General Ward immediately ordered Colonel Prescott and the American militia to defend Bunker Hill, which lay directly between Boston and Cambridge. On June 10th, he had assembled his volunteer army of 900 men on Cambridge Common. At dark, they marched off to Bunker Hill. When they reached the narrow neck of land across to Charleston, Prescott decided to defend not Bunker Hill, but Breed's Hill close by, lower down, and much more difficult to defend, which meant building a new fort by daylight, sight of the British fleet. However, they worked fast, and by dawn the next day, they had finished digging, but they had been seen and the British man of war lively opened fire on the fort. The cannon fire roused Boston, and Generals Gage, Howe, and Burgoyne met over breakfast to decide what to do. All the British fleet now opened fire on Breed's Hill, and many felt it was time to leave. Colonel Prescott sent out units to defend the hill down to the shores of the Mystic. By six o'clock, General Gage had decided to send out his grenadiers to remove the provincials from Reed's Hill. Colonel Prescott further reinforced his defenses, protecting his right flanks. Orders came from General Gage. The British grenadiers, 1,550 strong, lined up on the Boston docks, waiting to be ferried across the Charles River. Artillery was added to the fort by Captain Gridley. Colonel Prescott sent Major Brooks to Cambridge to ask for more men, and General Ward in Cambridge ordered out another volunteer regiment. During the morning, the British troops were ferried across, and by noon, all were ashore at Morton's Point. Prescott continued to build his defense down to the Mystic and more artillery was added to the rail fence line. Back in the busy fort, Dr. Warren of the Safety Committee in Cambridge had arrived. Also, veteran soldier Israel Putnam and old General Pomeroy, all champions of the cause of American liberty. General Howe at Morton's Point, meantime, ordered Charleston to be set afire to discourage American snipers. When all the men were ashore, ordered the drums to beat call to arms. By three o'clock, the troops stood before him on the slopes of Breed's Hill, where he addressed them, and said, I will not ask you to go a step further than I go myself at your head. His plan was to attack the fort from the rear, then to charge the fort up Breed's Hill. Light artillery would lead the way to break the defenses. However, they were given the wrong size cannonballs and could not fire their guns. Up in the fort, preparations for the battle ahead were going on. This was the decisive moment the Americans had been waiting for for so long, and they now had to prove their independence.
As the disciplined Redcoats started their slow march up Breed's Hill, Colonel Prescott warned his men to hold their fire until they were close enough to see the whites of their eyes. The first British attack was made by the Welsh Fusiliers along the banks of the Mystic, up to Captain Stark's position behind the barricade. The Colonial Volunteers fired a massed volley from close range, killing many British soldiers. The survivors fled. The first plan had failed. Now the frontal assault led by General Howe reached the rail fence when the full blast of close fire dropped many redcoats. The rest retreated out of range. On the left side of the hill, American snipers continued firing from the burning buildings. The men remaining in the fort had been on duty 24 hours and were now very tired. And there were no reinforcements. General Howe reformed his troops and attacked again. Fifty, forty, thirty yards. Fire! The British troops suffered heavy casualties again, wavered, broke, and fled downhill. Although he had now lost half his troops, wounded or killed, General Howe refused to admit defeat and called up his reserves. The Americans in the fort, who had thought they had won, hurriedly reloaded and prepared for yet another attack by the Redcoats. Low on powder and shot, they were now few in number and exhausted. General Howe ordered his men to leave their heavy packs and to attack in open ranks and light order. Now they were over the rail fence into the fort. It was hand-to-hand -hand combat. Stones, rocks, anything against swords and shot. Man to man. Colonel Prescott knew it was time to retreat. Dr. Warren died among the many American casualties. But the retreat was orderly. The British General Burgoyne described the American retreat as no flight. It was covered with bravery and skill. The British at nightfall had taken Breed's Hill but with terrible casualties. 226 dead, 828 wounded. The Americans, 140 killed, 271 wounded, 30 captured. The issues between the British and Americans were now clearly defined. Things could never be the same again between the two countries. General Gage wrote to London, the loss we have sustained is greater than we can bear. Colonel Prescott's stand became a symbol of American determination to go alone which would unite the nine colonies in a single protest. Breed's Hill Fort was to become a pattern for every hill around Boston, a defeat that turned into a victory, and known forever as the Battle of Bunker Hill. <laughs>